What is up, YouTube? Thank you for joining me tonight, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday. And today, we're going to be doing How to Get Sponsored by Handscape, kind of part two. So, the first time I put out part one, it was still called Hangnail Handboards. But with the name change, this will have the word Handscape in it. But this is a part two. If you want to go see part one, just type in the YouTube search, How to Get Sponsored by Hangnail Handboards. And trust me, you'll find the video. It is actually a very popular video of mine. One of the most popular videos. But this is part two, so I will be touching bases on something said in part one. But this will be more focusing on how to get recognized for handboarding. And we're going to start right off, so I'm not wasting too much time. And this is not a hopefully 16 minute video. But first thing you want to worry about is how good is your camera quality? Whether that be lighting or having a camera. So I have a desk lamp on top of my big light and I'd actually like to get more lights in here to help out in the low light slow motion. But this is what I use. This lamp is being moved from different sides of the table, uh, table so you guys can see me better and see the handboarding better. And right now I am filming on my phone. I have kind of dedicated to going to film to my phone uh, in the past few months because it's so much easier and the quality is so good but you do want a good quality camera so I have a Galaxy no what, what do I have I have a Note 5 that's it my phone is a Note 5 I always forget that I got off of a friend and well I bought, I bought it from a friend and the camera on it is fantastic but on top of that I also have and this is fine to use a GoPro this is the Sessions this is $200, it is the cheapest GoPro you can get, and this film's very great too. This is awesome for handboarding for first person shots. I haven't done it in a long time because transferring the footage does become somewhat of a pain, but it is a very, very good camera. If you do not have that and you have access to a DSLR, this is the Canon T6. This is about a $600 setup I have. And I actually have dust on it. I haven't touched this in a couple months because it is a pain to film, especially in my office. You require kind of a distance away for it. And I get the same quality from my phone. Now, I would use this if a friend wants to do a trick for like a video part and actual skateboarding. But I haven't been asked to film for stuff like that probably in about six months. So I don't use that camera as often as I used to. Mostly I'm using my phone anymore. So now that we have the cameras out of the way, because there's a term in the film world uh, for a bad camera, and it's filming on a potato. And you guys will see what I mean. On certain people's handboarding, the filming is horrible. And it is very difficult to understand what's going on. Uh, whether it's because of a lag, so the, the clip freezes for a second and then speeds through or different things. You want smooth footage that can be recognized easily in slow motion and not slow motion. And you want smooth slow motion too. You don't want that extremely weird editing software one. That's predominantly why I started using my phone for handboarding because the slow motion on my phone is very smooth in comparison to my editing software that I use. So now that we have cameras out of the way, we're gonna move on. I'm probably gonna stand up so my head will be cut off and we're going to talk about tricks, which ones to avoid, uh, style, and different things like that to make your videos very recognizable. So, another quick tip I will also say that adds some professional status to what you're doing here, handboarding, is having decent looking obstacles. I don't mean expensive, I don't mean professional. This is literally two bricks, liquid nailed together, with a board on bottom that would nail the cross. This is one of my favorite ledges and favorite obstacles I made. And besides the drying time, it took about 10 minutes to make. So very easy to make. Then you can make recognizable ones. So just this. Doesn't matter. It's not from a you know specific spot in my head. It's just from people doing lip slides on uh, obstacles like this. And that took about two hours to make. So I have probably about 12 obstacles, and 
The one I don't have anymore, I wish I could show you, the first one I ever made is a picnic table, and it took me about 20 minutes to put it together from plywood. So, instead of doing it on your math textbook, try to get obstacles like this. That, that's just a quick tip. But, when it comes to tricks, first off, you need to learn what ones to avoid. Now remember, this is to get recognized for being sponsored. So you want your skill level to be out there, and you want people to understand your skill level. And if you are not quite at the sponsor level yet, that's fine. Just keep working at it, and soon you will get there. But tricks to avoid would be kickflip front board, tray flip lift, fake the alley switch 5-0. I would say those are the three biggest tricks you would like to avoid trying to get recognized for skill level because those are the first tricks that most of us will learn and it shows that you're at a beginner level compared to say the next guy standing next to you. Now I'm not saying you cannot do these in your spare time to perfect them or you cannot put out videos with them in it. If you would want to put these into a video. I recommend making the video at least like an Instagram edit long, one minute, and putting those three tricks at the beginning of it and showing a progression throughout the video. Also on this topic, you want to go back and clean up anything done sloppy, and I do not care how long it takes. If you tried kickflip crooked grind for three hours, and the best one you could do is, and this may take a few tries to get one that looks weird. Like this. If you slide like this, then go into your front and pop out, redo it, especially if you're filming in slow motion, because every mistake is highlighted when in slow motion. So go back and try to do one, locking right in, right off the bat, no problem. Same thing goes with tail slide. You do not want to land with your wheels up here, then slap down, or in a slight 5 0, and then slap down. You want to land right into it and right out of it. Same thing goes if you're going to flip out of a trick. If it rolls on the ground, redo it. So we're going to get into more of the tricks right now and other things to avoid, but make sure you guys understand about cleanliness when it comes to your tricks. Like I said, I'm not saying you cannot post this stuff, but if you're trying to get recognized for skill, this is important. So we're going to get into two more quick topics. And then I'll sit down and think about if there's anything else I'd like to talk about in this video. So, two topics. Let's go. So, the next two topics I'm going to discuss is control of your board. Control is key to showing a skill level. So, I have a rule. No more than double flips in any tricks ever. So, if you want to do a kick flip. So, I'm going to use this as an example. If I'm coming off this edge here and I do a kick flip. It was done very clean. I caught it mid-air. If you slow it down, you will see me physically catch it and put it down. If I do a double flip, I caught it a little lower. Maybe I didn't catch it at all, but it still shows how much control I have over it. Do not fling the board. Do not try to do a quadruple flip because you think it takes more skill than doing a double flip because it's not consistent. It is not controlled. Same thing with if you wanted to do a tray double flip, that is fine. Go right ahead. It's very controlled. I can do them very consistently. Do not try to do a 720 quadruple flip because it doesn't take more skill and it shows that you are at one of the most beginning levels out there. Now in a game of skate against a friend, if you want to do a triple flip, you are more than welcome to. Remember, I'm not bashing any of these tricks. I'm just trying to help you guys out. So try to avoid anything under, uh, anything over three flips. And if it is a double flip, try to still catch it because it does show you have control over your board, even rotating quicker. Same thing goes with 540 flip. Do not do a 1080 flip. It's just professional looking. So the next thing I want to discuss quick is, and I'm kind of blinking, so I'm going to pause for a second. 
Okay, I remember now, for some reason my mind went blank. The next topic is creativity and what to avoid with creativity and what to do. So if you go back and watch my original Instagram posts with a hangnail handboard, I went to different street spots uh, in the fall and I did it on different art sculptures and posted stuff like that. And that was a big thing that helped me to get on the team of Handscape because they saw a level of creativity on the obstacles I was using outside. Plus they saw a level of creativity within my handboarding. So the two names I've been given over the year and a half I rode for Handscape is the late flip technician and alleged technician. Now, the alleged technician was only said by one or two people, but late flip technician was the name given to me by multiple people. And a lot of people get excited when I decide to take on a new late flip. And that is mostly because I'm recognized for them. And I'm not saying this to be arrogant, rude, or mean. But Dextra is known for his pop and his control, but he is not known for doing any late flips. He does do a couple of them. I have seen recently him start to do them. But if you go into one of his live streams and request specific late flips, I've actually heard this. This is 100% true. He turned people to me and asked the people in the live stream to ask me to do the late flips. Same thing with impossibles. He doesn't do impossibles, so he sent them to me. So you need to be recognized for something, and creativity is the easiest way to get there. Now, if you want to be recognized for late flips, you decide you're pretty good at them, pretty consistent, and you want to take them to the next level, do not flick up. That is one of my biggest pet peeves in handboarding, flicking up. So if I'm going to do a late flip, and I bet you I miss it, but if I'm going to do a late flip, I'm going to pop and do half of a heel flip. So when I hit it down, I have board to catch, and I will flip it down. And that was how I do the most traditional late flip. Do not pop it and flip from underneath, because you're throwing it into the air, you have changed the trick, and you have made it look very unprofessional. I'm not a big fan of that, and I kind of get annoyed when I see it. So if you want to do a tray flip, late flip, because this is the most common one I see. When you pop your tray flip, flick forward. If you flick forward and you're able to do it, you get you know a round of applause from me. But if you do a tray flip, flick it up, and then catch it and put it down, no, because that shows you do not have the skill yet to do true late flips. So work on that and try to avoid it. And like I've been saying with everything, do not think... You cannot do this. I'm not telling you how to handboard. I'm telling you how to do it to make footage good enough for being sponsored. So we're going to try to do a regular late flip here. So I pop, flick forward, flick down. If I'm going to do a late heel flip, I do half a kick flip. I actually did late double heel. Creativity is also key along with control. A real quick tip once again, make sure you're using the company you're aiming for. If you want to be on Redemption, use Redemption products. If you want to be on Genesis, use Genesis project products. If you want to be on Handscape, make sure you're rocking a Handscape. That is the biggest pet peeve to a company. So while it sounds silly, you will have to buy your first board. I bought my first board and I have gotten probably 40 since then, but you have to buy the first board. So you also have to realize each company is going to want something different. Redemption may want more followers than Handscape. Handscape may want more skill than Redemption. Redemption might want more YouTube videos than Handscape, and Handscape might want nothing but Instagram videos. So real quick, if you want to get picked up by Handscape in the future, do everything I just said. Post consistently to Instagram and make sure you tag and hashtag Handscape. Because if you don't, they probably will never see you. But if you do it enough, they'll start to recognize you and they might comment on a video. And you can slowly build a relationship that way before asking to be sponsored. So like I said to people before, it took me about six months. And also guys, realize this. If you've asked me in the past, I am not mad. I am not mad at all. But if you see this... 
I have no control of you getting sponsored on the team. I am just a writer for the team. So if I get asked by Zyler, is this person good enough to be sponsored? I can respond with my opinion. But my opinion doesn't matter. It is his decision. So I cannot go to Zyler. I cannot tell him or demand him to put you on the team. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, also, real quick, if you guys were to get on the team, that does not mean it's time to take a break. No means I have an understanding. I work 50 hours a week at a full-time job, so there might be a week or two I do not post, but I usually try to notify him prior to anything like this happening. So right now my Instagram app is not working for some reason. After my last post, it just keeps shutting down. So if this continues on for the next week, I'll let Zyler know because you are a constant advertisement for the company. So for every board they give you, you have to be able to sell two boards for them. And that's a big thing. So I've been talking for way too long. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I think I'm going to try to do two or three very difficult tricks on this. And maybe a fourth difficult trick for the bonus clip. But we shall see how this goes. And as always, YouTube, have a great day. Okay, YouTube, so many people don't know, but I'm also accredited for inventing two handboard tricks, including the impossible cancel and the front hand impossible cancel, which look like this.